Hello YouTube, Easy Sit here. I'm sitting in front of my OS2 Warp 3 desktop. This is an installation of OS2 Warp on my Compaq Desk Pro EP6400. This machine is a Pentium 2 uh, running at 400 megahertz. You can see it has a CD-ROM drive, a, a zip drive, and a floppy. This machine was built in 1998, and it was built for Windows NT and Windows 98. It has 256 megs of RAM. It has a 4 gigabyte SSD, or uh, disk on module, as it's called. And I bought the disk on module because I had played around with trying to get a CF card uh, working as a install drive, installable drive, but CF cards, the consumer grade ones, are locked as removable media. OS2 didn't want to install to that, so I resorted to a, a disk on module which was uh, probably a better solution. It plugs right into the IDE controller. And I chose 4 gigabytes because OS2 Warp, when it was released in 94, um, had trouble working with drives larger than 4 gigabytes. Now, IBM released a patch for the installer that you applied to the uh, one of the boot disks, the hard drive, uh, the hard drive uh, driver, uh, to recognize disks larger than four gigabytes and eventually larger than eight gigabytes. But I chose four because uh, it was easy to do the install, and the system really doesn't require that much space. Uh, on this SSD, I have Warp Four and Warp Three. I'm going to be looking at Warp 3 right now. So if you notice, the desktop has, uh, not by default, I turned it on by clicking on the clock, but we have a clock in the corner. I can move that around. There is a dock, or what OS2 calls the launch pad. And the launch pad uh, looks like was either the inspiration for or inspired by CDE's uh, um, dock or launch pad in, in Unix. The information icon and some of the other icons in the system are eerily similar to CDE icons. But you can lock up the computer. That's a strange term to, to use. It never really occurred to me how awkward a lockup button is. Uh, normally you don't want to lock up your system, but I assume that means you can password protect the screen. <laughs> uh, you can shut down from here. You can look at a window list, and the window list is the currently running uh, programs. So the system clock, the launch pad, and the desktop. The desktop is just a folder. So it and it's open all the time, so it is always going to be in the window list. The title bar you can see has controls in the upper left corner, and it also has controls in the right corner to minimize, maximize. So minimizing it, just it's always running the window list, so you can bring it up. Um, uh, and you have a find tool to look for objects. You also have access to your disk drives, the floppy, the hard disk, and the CD-ROM. You also have access to control uh, command prompt. This is the OS2 command prompt. And you can see it looks a lot like a command prompt. You also have access to the DOS prompt because OS2 included a virtual 
DOS machine inside OS2. So let's exit these and typing exit is the preferred way to get out of the command prompt. If you close the window you get a warning that a program may or may not be running inside that virtual machine. So there's also, if you notice, a little Windows uh, button. Let's click on that. OS2 Warp uh, version 3 uh, Blue Spine came with a complete version of Windows 3.1 built in. So this allowed OS2 users to install and use almost all the current Windows um, software on the market, which was both good and bad for OS2. Uh, it was good for the consumer because there was tons of available Windows software that would run right out of the bat, right out of the gate. But it was bad because OS2 didn't inspire or require developers to develop OS2 specific titles. Uh, most software developers chose to just release uh, Windows software knowing that OS2 users, if they wanted to, could run Windows software. Uh, there was a lot of OS2 development, but not in the commercial sector, uh, or not in the consumer sector, I might add. So, uh, Windows 3.1 inside OS2 works a lot like Windows 3.1 would if you installed it over DOS. You have the file manager and all the other, uh, you have control panels. And I'm not going to install any Windows software, but you get the point. I created a, a button here for Star Office. Now, if those of you who don't know, Star Office was the precursor, the basis for Open Office, which was itself the basis for LibreOffice. Star Office was uh, originally written uh, by Star Division, then bought out by Sun, and it was an office suite that allowed for uh, the use and creation of text documents, spreadsheets, presentations, drawings, it had a built-in email client. It had a built-in HTML uh, editor. And there are links there to Sun Microsystems website and Star Office's product website. OpenOffice changed uh, a lot of the interface. Obviously, this is how it used to look. And before version 5, version 3 and 4, these were separate programs. They weren't integrated into this desktop metaphor. And it is a desktop metaphor. Um, you can see the style of the menus is very Windows 95-ish. It even has start button built into its own program and the start button does pick up some of the OS2 programs it doesn't like the bookmark feature but if we go to program files you can see you can launch some of the OS2 installed applications right from within 
star office. Interesting, right? It even has its own little clock. So that's Star Office 5.1. 5.1 was released by after the purchase of Star Office by Sun Microsystems. Okay. So let's take a look around the desktop. I've moved some of these folders around. Uh, by default, when, when OS2 is installed, all of the pro, uh, icons are lined up along the top, and I wanted to move them down a little bit. And the reason for that will be apparent when we start one of the programs I installed. But we have Adobe Acrobat, and that's there and it has its own uninstaller. There is no uh, software uh, uninstall and installer for third-party software. In OS2, in the system folder, there is a folder for install remove, but this only handles OS2 components. It does not handle third-party software. It did come with some games, so Solitaire, Mahjong, and uh, Chess. The startup folder has, uh, you can place objects in there that you want to start up when OS2 uh, starts. The drives, this is a folder even though the icon doesn't look like it contains access to your drives. Now, this is duplicated down here in the launch pad, but it's available there. You have the shredder. OS2 did not have a trash can or a recycle bin. It had a shredder, and the shredder did what sh shredders do, is destroyed the document or object you placed on the shredder. So there was no undelete built in. And there was no, if you didn't want to delete something, you didn't delete it. You didn't move stuff to the shredder store for later. Like some people use the trash in Windows or Mac. The minimize window viewer is the same as the window list although in icon form, not list form. Productivity. We have a few productivity apps. We have a picture viewer, a clipboard viewer for viewing uh, copy, you know, the clipboard contents. Pulse is a very simple uh, little CPU monitor. An icon editor, the seek and scan files tool, an enhanced editor which is geared more for programmers and the system editor which is your basic text editor. In command prompts we have a few uh, that were shown in the launch pad but we have a few more here. Uh, you can run DOS from the uh, floppy drive. You can run a windowed or full screen uh, Windows 3.1 session. You can run a windowed or full screen DOS prompt and a windowed and full screen OS2 prompt. In system setup we have pretty much some what are akin to control panels and utilities. There is a create utility diskette utility which creates a set of two boot floppies that any OS2 user uh, in the past would definitely have handy because uh, there's always that occasion where you're, you need to boot into your system and uh, make adjustments to system files or restore a previous config sys uh, booted from a floppy rather than the hard drive. You can set up parameters for your WinOS 2 sessions, the uh, Windows 3.1 session. If 
you're on a laptop, you might need the power uh, uh, control panel. You can change the color scheme, the fonts, and uh, the color palettes. You can, the sound control panel allows you to turn on system sounds as well as uh, associate sound files to system events and control the volume. Selective uninstall will uninstall uh, system components. Add programs. This is um, probably a little confusing in this day and age. What it does is it searches your hard drive and creates if not already created objects, graphical objects in the workplace shell for installed programs. It doesn't install additional software. Uh, the spooler allows you to control print jobs. You can change a country setting. The system control panel has some settings for changing the screen resolution. Uh, turning on or off confirmations for certain actions. So if you didn't want to be bothered with confirming to delete, you can turn those confirmations off. Confirming to rename. Uh, when you're moving or copying files, you can set the system to prompt you if you attempt to rename or copy a file in a location with an identical file name. You can auto rename the objects or replace. So the window settings allow you to decide what the button appearance is like for windows. Either hide or minimize. Um, animation you can enable or disable. Uh, minimize button behavior Minimize to the desktop. Okay. Uh, display existing window, create new window. Okay. And then you can go into further pages on the window controls. Let's do that because sometimes when you open new folders, it le uh, the default behavior was to leave the parent folder open. Uh, it produces a lot of screen clutter. So let's turn that off and uh, we will automatically close subfolders. Default view. You can change the default view for folders to icon, tree, or details. You can enable or disable type ahead. Okay. You can enable or disable print screen and logo I've never really touched that general you can change the name of the object and its icon now I'll, we just went through all these settings in the settings notebook and I call it a notebook because it has the graphic of a spiral binder on one side and tabs on the other Let's close that. There is a device driver installer. So if you purchase hardware that came with OS2 devices on diskette, you'd run this and it point it towards the diskette drive and it would help to install your device drivers. There's a mouse control uh, control panel for double click and tracking speed and setting the right-handedness or left-handedness, mapping buttons on the mouse, changing pointers, turning on comet cursor, so a lot of control over the mouse. Selective install would be the complement to selective uninstall. <laughs> keyboard allows you to change keyboard settings. System clock just shows the system clock. MGA settings is a control panel that came with the Matrox Millennium driver so you can control more fully the aspects of your video card. 
contents. So there's also information. The OS2 came with a ton of information. You can see books, glossaries, tutorials, well, one tutorial, uh, the master index, some readmes, um, and more books. OS2 did require a lot of reading. If you wanted to know the system and work with it well, you needed to read. So, let's go back here. Multimedia. OS2 touted itself as multimedia ready, and it certainly was for its time. It did have 3D effects, it did have uh, built-in digital video and audio players, it did have built-in compact disc players and MIDI players. There was one movie that came with the system. And let's go ahead and play that. Didn't catch that. That was quick. There you go. Let's go back to multimedia. You could uh, change the setup of the multimedia uh, programs. It came with a data converter. It came with some sample sounds. And let's take a listen to one of the MIDI files here. little jazzy there and it came with a whole bunch of wave files let's go back and finish off we have another way to get to the sound control panel uh, a, a documentation on using multimedia with Rex Rex is the uh, interpreted programming language it came with OS 2 and I believe Rex was uh, purchased the, the rights to redistribute Rex with OS2 was purchased by IBM from Amiga, where Rex was uh, uh, first introduced. So, and uh, just so you know, the workplace shell, which is the graphical environment of OS2 2.0 and forward, was really inspired in some ways by Amiga. Um, so it was very unlike anything else at the time. Uh, it was very unlike Windows 3.1, which was current when OS2 Warp came out. It was very unlike Windows NT, which was really had the Windows 3.1 interface. It was unlike Linux. Uh, well, it was unlike, Linux was out in '94, of course. But it was very unlike uh, X Windows. It was very unlike the Mac. But it had some similarities to all those systems, but did it in a, its own way. It was somewhat similar to Amiga OS, uh, Workbench. And maybe the Workplace Shell name is sort of a hint towards uh, the Workbench of Amiga because I think most of the inspiration for the workplace shell came from the Amiga. So let's close this window and I want to show you uh, a couple more things. One is templates. Now templates are objects that you can use to drag and drop to create a new instance of that object. So, and the way to drag in OS2 Warp is with the right button. So I'm clicking and holding on the folder icon, and we'll drag it over to the desktop. And now you can see we created a folder. Let's make this a little longer. There we go. 
there is a printer uh, template and if you wanted to install a printer you would drag the printer template onto say the desktop and it would start the process of installing a printer so you give it a name if I had a printer driver installed it should appear here if I had the printer just plugged in and had the driver file or disk at ready I could install it right here and choose the output port or output to a file pretty cool so that's how you'd set up a printer so let's cancel because we're not setting up a printer cancel and OK there we go so that is the object uh, that is the point of templates so let's close this and I want to show you a little program that's shareware uh, it's called file bar and it's an interesting little program for OS 2 so let's double click on that and you can see that shareware is uh, file bar is shareware and it's asking you to please register if you continue to use it so let's take a look at what file bar did or does it it is a file bar that sits at the top or you can choose the bottom of the screen and the menus will drop down you can open save save as refresh lockup system <laughs> edit the menus in file bar change the options and if we go to general we can position the file bar at the top or the bottom um, how to launch windows sessions uh, wants to know the program to use to launch windows programs uh, we can set it so that when the system starts if we put the file bar icon uh, object in the startup folder um, we can have the system lock up on startup uh, let's see we can resize the WPS desktop on boot and enable or disable other features let's go back to the file bar menu work areas what work areas is is virtual desktops and you can see virtual desktop one has the clock running and all the other virtual desktops do not but it gives you virtual workspaces in OS 2. There are other uh, applications, utilities, whatever you want to call them, that provided workspaces for OS 2. But this one not only implements it rather well, I think, gives you a lot of default workspaces, um, but it also gives you this beautiful little file bar. If you go to about, it tells you who wrote it and the copyright and that it's a shareware demo version. It wants you to register of course and if you register later it tells you the details of how much it costs and where to send your payment to and that you will be then uh, given a registration code to unlock the full features. Pretty cool. So the task list gives us uh, the running tasks and a shutdown command. The command prompts give a uh, menu gives us access, quick access to all the command prompts. And the OS2 menu gives us access to some of the default OS2 installed uh, features. Pretty cool.
pretty cool. And it also gives us a digital clock up in the corner. So we can turn this clock off. So that is a quick look. Well, oh wait, I, I did want to do one more thing here. Let's open up the C drive. And I did want to show you config sys. Because config sys, if you're if you remember your DOS days, config sys was a small file that just specified some device drivers and um, I think it set some environment variables for DOS. But in OS2, config sys is a much more complicated file. And you can see it right from the beginning it sets up the, or loads the uh, file system driver HPFS and HPFS was a file system developed to overcome the limitations of FAT. It provided uh, full 256 character file names, it provided um, very fast indexing, B-tree uh, indexing, it um, got away from the allocation table method of uh, file system main, um, structure to uh, F nodes and I nodes uh, structure of uh, file system uh, creation and let's see then it loads the PM shell and it sets some environment variables the user and system INI files up here are uh, binary files are so not uh, editable in a text editor. Uh, you did need uh, specific INI file editors to edit the settings, uh, the user and the system settings. They were an early implementation of a registry of sorts. And they did need some maintenance or they did get bloated over time and use. Uh, so there were utilities to help clean the INI files. Uh, if you will, a uh, early versions of CCleaner uh, for OS2. It wasn't called CCleaner, but um, it's called INI Editor. It was one such program. Uh, and there were others. And it was a good habit to keep a backup copy of your OS2 INI and OS2 sys INI files just in case the originals or the, the copies in use became corrupted. You could boot off your um, a utility disks and go into the OS2 folder and create backups because you couldn't back it, uh, these files up from the running system. You had to do it from a uh, booted from some something other than the uh, running system's hard drive. So that was always good practice back in the day. And you can see uh, device drivers, um, path statements, uh, setting, uh, and um, it's a word I'm looking for. Environment settings, more device drivers, uh, buffer settings, wait state settings, swap uh, swap file settings. Um, yeah, uh, the config sys file had a lot. Uh, it was very important. And all the way at the end, you can see the video drivers loading, and then the sound card drivers loading. Those I had to install after the uh, OS2 was installed so those device drivers were inserted into the uh, config sys file uh, last. So let's close that and it was always a good idea to keep a couple backup copies of your working config sys plus I have the backup of the original as it was installed. So that 
I think we'll wrap up my look at OS2 Warp 3.0. Let's close this out here. And I hope you enjoyed this retro operating system from 95. Uh, I believe OS2 Warp came out in 94. OS2 Warp Connect, which included the internet software, came out in 95, I believe. So, bye-bye for now.